Hello and welcome to another Minecraft. This is a really odd start for the world. But yes, this is Dungeons and Dragons. Now I don't know if it's going to be like the board game or it's going to be totally different. If it's like the board game, I won't have a clue what I'm doing because I actually never got into D&D games. The same with the Warhammer stuff. I never really got into that either. So I'm guessing we gotta hit Do not something okay. So if I press that we're not supposed to touch it. Oh F one. Well I'm not on a PC so I haven't got F one. So I guess if we hit hit this, refresh this. And I'm Steve by the looks of things. All oh, right. Oh, I see. It's a whole load of, whole load of different settings for it. Oh, okay. Just double check. Yes, I am Steve. So that means my. Skin doesn't work. Oh no, there's that one. Okay. That was. Mando. Oh, that one works. That one doesn't work. That one works. Okay, so your skin might not. that you've made might not work in this world. I've had a couple like this that I've had to change back to this skin. So here's the room. Okay. Off we go. So there's the ball game of Dungeons and Dragons. Can you get on the table? Eh. So where do I sit? Well, what do I do? Where do I go? Can we... Lots of Dungeons and Dragons stuff. Is it this one? Doesn't it seem to be... Hang on, what came up then? This seat is for the dungeon master. Okay. Sit. I don't want that. We can sit. Ah, well, that I definitely didn't see that earlier. Hey, glad you made it. I'm really happy that you're willing to give this game a shot. It's one of my favourite things to do with friends. Between the role playing, strategy, and just being goofy with each other, it's always a great time. D and D has something for every kind of player. Now, you said the other day that you wanted to just get kind of an intro experience before joining my regular campaign group. So I figured a more individual sort of experience would be a good way of showing you the ropes. Give you an idea of what the experience can feel like. Just take a seat whenever you feel like getting started. I've got snacks that should last us until the end of the universe, so help yourself to those too. Good to go? OK, so first things first, let's choose your class. I've got the basics already written up for a few of them, so you only need to worry about picking one. Okay, I can't move now, I think. Do you want to be a holy warrior with the ability to heal yourself and smite your foes with the power of your deity? Paladin? Oh, or maybe a wizard using your ma- hmm. but a rogue could be fun too. But it's also lots of fun to just be a barbarian with a big axe. 
barbarians can get so angry that they just kind of forget that they've been hit and keep hacking away. I've always had a hard time choosing when I'm a player, so take your time. <coughs> Alright, here we go. Well, we go for Barbarian. Go. No? Okay, next let's allocate your stats. You want me to explain how stats and dice rolling work in this game? Mm. You'll also see that your class already has stats that will best support their abilities. How do you want to make okay. them better at what they already do, or... Again. Oh, now I've got out my chair. Oh, I know. I don't know how many of these I can do. Oh, that took one away. Oh, I see, that's minus. Well, that means that's minus then. Oh, that's it. And like that, you've made your first character. Congrats! Okay. Now, how about we dive right in? The continent of Faerun has seen hundreds of stories turn into legends. The Dawn Age, when dwarves overthrew the tyrannical giants and elves waged war against evil dragons, thereby carving out a place in the world for small folk. The tyranny of the Rose Dragon, when the Great Red Worm, Yelvir Asalisar, nearly razed Kalimshan and established her cruel empire. The time of troubles, when celestials and fiends alike were cast from their own realms, warring and laying waste to the mortal plane in their efforts to reclaim their divine positions. Yet each great story has great people steering the narrative. The Rose Dragon's empire only fell because Rathak Al-Kajan and his companions slew the evil beast. The times of troubles ended because those like the mage Midnight rose to the occasion, in their case taking the mantle of divinity from the slain celestial Mistra until she could be resurrected. Now we come to the precipice of another such event, a budding calamity that could warp reality as we know it. Though there is no prophesied chosen one, no foreseen saviour, if you play your cards right, you might just be able to avert what is to come. Or perhaps your story will simply serve as a cautionary tale for those who survive. Despite this, it all starts with something as mundane as fetching groceries for your parents.
Okay. We open on Nashkel, a village on the northern slopes of the Cloud Peaks. The late spring rains have abated, making the trek across town to deliver a commission for your father at least a bit less muddy. As you make your way back along the main street, though, it is hard not to notice that your otherwise quiet home is riddled with strained, whispered conversations. <laughs> I'm guessing that's why you couldn't use a skin that you've created then. Because you end up looking with one of these on him. Okay, so that's why your skin might not work. I'm guessing we gotta go there, have we? It's the devil, isn't it? Why does it look like he's trying to do a poo? Can I talk to you? How do we talk? I don't want to... Standing behind his produce stand is Eric, one of the farmers living on the village's outskirts. Your father said you'd be along to pick up his purchase. I don't envy him his back problems. Anyhow, here you go. I'm sure he appreciates having you around to do all the heavy lifting for him. Thanks, Eric. Sure thing. Just make sure to get home safe. Take care, Eric. Mm-hmm. See you around. Okay, so we got food now. Now we still got That's gone now. Ah. That way. Okay. Oh, I see, we can buy. Um, I don't have any coins. What's this? You hear voices from inside okay. your house. Perhaps it is worth waiting and listening in. And I just heard about it this morning. Does anyone else know? I caught one of the trackers before he could go out to look for Helsa. He said he'd check it out while the trail was still warm, if there was one. But I don't know if he told anyone else first. We'll have to assume that he did. People are already starting to panic, and this will make it worse. I heard people at the market this morning talking about unfamiliar monsters. No one had seen the things themselves, but the rumors are bad enough. This goes on, and you'll have a mob at your front door demanding answers. I'm surprised we haven't seen one already. We've got to get ahead of this. So what are you going to do about it? Give me a minute. I've got an idea, but I want to talk it over with Katra first. You're welcome to stay if you like. They should be back soon. Ah, there you are. Put the food on the table and come talk to me. There's something we need to discuss. Listen, you heard about the people going missing. I'm not going to sugarcoat this, but the whole Kelsit family is gone now. Neri found their farm empty this morning without even a sign of struggle. This is asking a lot, and I've got a feeling your mother's gonna kill me after I say this. Then don't say it. But I need you to go speak with Endandravair and ask for his help. You're right. I think I will throttle you. Are you insane? People are going missing, and you think sending Katra out into the woods by themselves is somehow a good idea? I have to agree with Ellen. They'd make a tempting target. The trackers have been going on their own, and no one's bothered them. Besides, after all the training I've put Katra through, they should be fine on their own. Yes, but you could just send one of the trackers, or someone else. I want the trackers to keep looking for our people. Other than them, there's no one else I'd trust in the woods more than Katra. After all the times you've run off into there as a kid, you probably know the paths better than most of the villagers. And Vayir is important. His ego probably won't let him talk to just a random villager. Neri could go, but she doesn't know how to fight, and I don't want the community's healer to be missing for a whole day if someone breaks their arm. 
And you're not worried what Vair might do to them? Unless Katra does something really stupid, which I would trust them not to, they'll be fine. Mom, if I can help the village, then I'm happy to do it. Besides, I was just in the woods yesterday looking for berries, and I was fine. I was hoping you'd say that. This isn't exactly an enviable task. I'm proud of you. Now, Endon Dravair is a proud creature. He has the wisdom of the ages and probably knows something that we don't. But there's a good chance he won't help us for free, just on principle. If he doesn't, I want you to offer him money. This pouch has a hundred gold coins in it. A hundred? Where did you get that kind of money? I took it from the village's emergency fund. I'd say this counts. Rounded it out to a hundred using money we were saving for a new roof. Start with a low offer, like 30, and work your way up, unless you think you're going to insult him or lose his interest. Whatever help or advice he can give will be welcome. If we're lucky, he might already know where our missing people are or where to look. A bird's eye view could show him what we need. I still think that this is a bad idea. If I'm being honest, it probably is a bad idea, but it's... The only is there anything else I should know before going? At this point, you know everything that we do. I wish we could be of more help, but Vair's home is not far. Hopefully nothing will bother you on the way. Right. I guess I'll head out now, then. Oh, before you go, do you want to do a quick sparring match? Couldn't hurt to brush up on your technique, just in case. One more thing. I'm sure you can find your way and don't want me fussing over you. But in case something happens... Thanks! I'll take good care of it. Just be careful, and come back and- Okay. Ooh, don't want to break my own door down. So is there a... Mark for us to... This way, I suppose. There's the edge of the village. Oh, I see. Oh, why am I always crouched then when I go into the book? Strange. I don't know if I'm supposed to be going this way or not. Um... What is that? It is someone... No! Stay back! Oh, there's two of them. Okay. I wasn't expecting that. I wonder if they got something to do with what's going on. Oh, I'm healing back up as well. Okay. I'm guessing I can't. We can't do anything like we would if it was normal Minecraft. So I'm guessing it's, it's uh, like a role playing map style where you can only do certain things.
I wonder if you could use the texture in a, in a normal Minecraft world. I don't know what that would look like. The problem is a lot of stuff like that, they don't have ones for the dragon. But they should Guess have this is it? Unless this wayfinder led me to some old owlbear den. <sighs> okay then. Okay, in the cave we go. Ooh, gold. Don't tell me. I can't touch it. No. Darn it. I need more money. Could have sold the gold. <laughs> that don't sound good. As you reach for the coin that seemed to suck the life from Endan Dravaeir, you note a crack running down its face. Whatever these people want with it, you doubt they should have it. The moment you touch the metallic surface, though, a jolt of energy sears through your fingers and up your arm, followed by a sense of pressure, as if the ocean's tide were rushing into your flesh. Recoiling. The coin is adhered to your fingertips, bound there even as you feel that the force pouring from it stretches your skin and crushes your bones, threatening to rupture and burst your entire body. Other than your body, though, it is the coin that bursts, erupting into shards of metal as the same light that flowed into it earlier streams into you. The physical pain abates, though something continues to press on your mind clawing its way into your thoughts and filling your skull as the world around you distorts and turns insensible, chaotic, and then, finally, dark. What? What happened? Where is... Who are you? What have you done to me? I don't know. Answer me. No, please... Stop! Who are you? What are you doing to me? Who... Uh, who am... I will ask again. Who are you? What happened to those people in my cave? Your cave? Who or what are you? Do not play games, child. I am Endan Dravayer, and you will answer my questions. My name's Katra. I... I live in the nearby village. You, you're saying you're the dragon? Do not play games with me, child. Now answer my questions. What happened in my cave and what have you done to me? I wasn't with those people and I only saw the last part when, when that weird coin started doing something. It looked like they were pulling something out of you and then some thing was put into your body. I think I thought they'd killed you. They... might have. Did you see anything? I was... I think I was unconscious for a while, but, but I must have walked to get back here, right? I only came back to consciousness when you were calling for your parents. What do you remember? They... I... I remember the... They must have trapped my soul in that coin. I, I have heard of artifacts that can do such. 
I had never expected that it would be so painful, though. It, it felt like I was being torn and pulled apart, then crushed until I could not even tell what part of my body I was feeling. I suppose, though, that I was not feeling my body at all. After that, I saw the thing seeping out of my body, but I could not see if it, if I, was breathing. Everything after is unclear. It, I was still reeling when the next thing I clearly saw was your face. A moment before, I felt my, felt that transfer again. That now, we need to return me to my, do you smell smoke? Yeah. I'm going home. I need to see if anything has happened. This is a waste of time. You need to find the people who took my body immediately. Only after I see if they went to my village first. They may have done something. Wait, we better get home. Can't see any smoke. Oh no, the village is on fire, no, no, no. no! Mom! Dad! Ready! Hush! Tunnel! Anyone! The house? What happened to the house? Mom! Dad! Help! Someone help! Someone tell me what- ah, So there is someone left. Oh, I figured there would be a few of you bumpkins left scurrying about like rats. Well, we can't have you going and squealing to your neighbors about us, no. We want things to be quiet and peaceful. So you will have to come with us. Take or kill them. We'll have no witnesses today. Looking at this place, if they did not respond the first time, I doubt they ever will. You may search, but you seem to be alone here. Why would they do this? Where is everyone? Do you actually expect an answer to that question, or are you simply asking empty questions to hear yourself speak? No, it's just... this is a lot to process, and I feel sick. Oh, we do not have time for you to be pathetic. Your little village is gone. Accept that and move on. That's cruel and not appreciated right now. I understand that you're upset, but I am too. So can you please lay off? Hmm. Fine. So what are we supposed to do now? I don't have a home, and you don't have a body, and I'm not letting you take over mine. I do not think that I could even if I tried. As much as it galls me to admit it, all I can do is hurt you. I think that I could kill you if I truly wished, but that would likely end my life too. That's... good to know. We shall hunt the people who took my body. 
We will find a way for you to put me back, and I can force answers out of those treacherous eels. Perhaps you can use the coin again to set things right. But it exploded when I touched it. It felt like something was being forced into me before I blacked out. That must have been when you came. Hmm. Without the coin, I doubt that you would have been able to restore me anyhow. Much less after whatever that monster of theirs did to me in the time since. It seemed to be fusing with my form. It might have been feeding, but that was not the impression I felt. So I've got the same question as before. What now? Short of purging my soul from your body, which I would not recommend, lest you want me to destroy the both of us first, you will need to put me into another vessel. Ideally, though, that vessel will be my own original body, purified of whatever has come to infest it. If your villagers were taken by this group, then finding where they have taken me will also lead you to the answers you seek. Sure, but I don't know anything about healing dragons or moving souls from one body to another. How are we supposed to do all of that or even find these people? Hmm. I think that the best course now would be to seek the advice of the scholars in Candlekeep. It is relatively close and hosts the greatest collection of knowledge in Faerun that I am aware of anyhow. If anyone would know of a cure, or be able to devise one, and be able to tell us more about this group of people that attacked me, then we will almost certainly find them in Candlekeep's great library. Rather than walk the whole way, see if that man with the card is heading north. Preserve your strength while you can. I think that's actually the first good, usable advice you've given me. Do not push your luck with such frequent sarcasm, child. Find the cart and let us leave. Okay, that's chapter one completed of this. Oh, we've got firepower now. Okay. Fireball. Yes, I'll go there. Alright, I hope you enjoyed our little first look at Dungeons and Dragons. If you would like to see more of this, because this is like a... I suppose a little story in the to do. And please let me know in the comments. And if there's enough people that says yes they would like to see more, I might do some more episodes of this. So thank you for watching. If you enjoy this, please subscribe. And hopefully see you in the next one. Bye for now.